Good morning everybody and welcome to a new special episode because today we're sharing with you five accessories that pro photographers use all the time, at least we do. So it's gonna be five for Jeremy, five for myself. If you don't know me, I'm Pieti Lambert, travel adventure photographer, travel everywhere around the world with my gear and put it in extreme conditions that you probably shouldn't do. Jeremy, who are you? I'm Jeremy, I'm uh, editing the video for this channel and the French channel for Pierre and I'm a videographer and photographer and traveling around the world full time. And we thought it would be a great idea to actually share those accessories at the end of the year. Maybe you're looking for a gift for yourself, for a friend, for someone or you're just wondering what to do with all that extra money. And my suggestion is don't buy any of what we share, just buy experiences with people, it's gonna make you a lot happier. But with that being said, if you're still looking for stuff to simplify your photography, we have a few suggestions. So it's gonna be five Jeremy, yeah. five me, you ready to start? Yeah, let's start right now with what I have right in front of me. Uh, uh -huh. So this is this camera little camera. thing all over my camera. Uh, the brand is called Altex. That's basically a, like a silicone cover that allow me to just like shoot underwater. Uh, but it could also be used, for example, if you are in a muddy condition or if you're shooting a waterfall and there is a lot of mist mm. all around you and all and you want to protect your gear, uh, that will be really helpful for that. I really like this one compared to like a lot of those dry bag, uh, like for example, the M Wamarine that you yeah, used to use. that I've used for years. Um, because I can see actually my back screen uh, because of that uh, rear glass right there. And I have also control over all my button I can easily switch between mode um, I can easily use my back button focus um, so it just gives me a lot of control it's super compact to travel with compared to like uh, underwater housing and it's super yeah. heavy we we're talking about like it the my other day cam is so big and so heavy it's crazy so that's been uh, super helpful and I've been using it a lot uh, in the past year yeah, and if you're afraid, I've used my camera condom for years, the War Marine one. Uh, I actually kind of prefer this one now that I've tried it because the silicone makes it like a little easier to move and like press buttons, but also because it has the option to have a glass at the back, which means you can really see well the screen uh, versus the one I have is a plastic cover at the back. and. Honestly, it's kind of hard to see what you're doing. Now, it will never replace a big housing if you're trying to add lights or if you need extra stability, like really having something with the strong stability. But with that said, I think a great tool if you wanna throw it in your bag and have an option to shoot underwater or in terrible conditions. Speaking of terrible conditions, there is something great that I discovered recently. No, it's not a towel for when you're wet. It is actually a little pouch for a camera, you just throw in like this and it allows to protect it, avoid like elements to go in, debris, sand, dust, whatever. And you can throw it in any backpacks and it will be a little protected. And why is it so helpful? It's because sometimes I don't want to carry my big backpack. So I just use this, throw this in the bag of my daughter. It allows me to move around in the day without carrying a big backpack. And I find it helpful, especially when you're trying to practice more, take more photos, have fun uh, without too much hassle. It's always important to keep your setups as minimal as possible so you don't get overwhelmed by options. Sometimes you will find them if you buy a leather thing, like some companies, like high-end companies will give you sleeves like that. So I highly recommend you to keep them and use them for your cameras. To bounce out of that and what you say of not bringing like your big backpack, uh, my second one will be this foldable backpack from mm. Matador that I really like. Uh, Cause in my camera backpack that I'm having all the time there is not only camera gear there is also you know like my computer like keyboard yeah. and, and all that so it's becoming very heavy quickly and sometimes when i'm just going quickly out i don't want to have to carry everything with me so that's where i'm just like bringing that and i really like this one specifically because the panel here at the back is rigid which is generally not the case for like foldable backpack you also have like hip support and sternum support and it's just like really really uh well built that i really like the Matador brand, the quality is always really on point. This one is like the 28 liter, they have an 18 uh, liter as well. And they have also, you know, like those smaller ones that are maybe 10 liter, but like it's mostly just fabric. And then uh, you don't have that panel being so rigid. As you can see right now, this one is just like 
folding like that and it can just get so very cool. very compact uh, so it's just easy to travel with it i want one like that i've been looking for one similar for a while and i think this is really good i like the fact that it has a little bit of structure yeah i'm just putting the camera in it maybe one lens a jacket water bottle and i'm just ready to go around yeah. and it just like push me to go out and shoot more that's what you want all right ladies and gentlemen number two is going to be a hose a water hose to rinse off your camera extremely important accessory because you don't know in which conditions you're gonna be and sometimes you need to rinse your camera okay i'm just kidding sometimes you get in tricky situations so our camera cleaning kit is essential nowadays for me in my bag i have one of those lens pen which is great can like brush off stuff from your camera and your lens uh, the other side has another tip which is uh, really good for the glass part and this is just a, bl a blower air blower that will help with all the dust and so when i got my camera full of mud in Utah, yes, yeah, sure, I could have avoided it, but I didn't think I would get splashed on. If I'm very honest, I thought I was a little out of the splash zone. But what happened is there was like thick mud everywhere. And the worst thing I could have done is let it dry and try to scratch it off because I still have mud now, even after washing it. And I think that would have been a big issue. And the mud, when it's sticking, is really hard to get off. So what I did is I rinsed it off, then I dried it with a towel, and then I used one of the lens blower to really go in all the creases when it had dried up to remove all the dust. And then I could open the lens, uh, clean if anything else has to be clean. I kind of knew the limits of my gear for all those who reacted in a way like, oh, he's disrespecting his gear, you can't do that. Gear is tools. I think you have to use them. You also have to understand the limits of your tools. And I think for me, over time, I kind of learned to know the limits of my A1. I also have personal knowledge of someone who literally fell in the Amazon in a mud river, got it out, still working, dipped it in the river, and then spent three months like working in 90% humidity conditions on 99 percent straight for three months in amazon and strange. the camera was like good to go so it's something i was aware of i don't know about all the cameras but um, this one my a1 and most recent sony weather sealed are, are pretty good so just wanted to point that out and i also have a sensor cleaning kit which i used on the field already once usually one little brush with me just in case you just blow it and and wipe it if need be okay for me, super essential. It's always in my bag at all time as well, because uh, you never know what's gonna happen. Nice. Like recently, we went shooting with the whales, and I was at like f18 uh, for videos, yeah. and I had like a bunch of spots on my videos. So this morning, I had to clean my sensor. Uh, so yeah, always uh, need one in the backpack. My third one will be a camera strap. I've never been a big camera strap guy. Uh, that never been really on my list because uh, I've always used those quick attach from Big Design. But the thing is, sometimes if I'm going quickly to just like a supermarket and I know I'm gonna be out for like mm -hmm. 20, 30 minutes, I don't want to take my big camera backpack with me. I'm not gonna take my camera and then therefore I'm not gonna shoot. Where I could have just bring the, the camera with me, having it hanging on my side and maybe I could have taken like one, two or three nice shots if the light were nice or if there was like a nice scene around. So the strap have been super helpful. I really like the Peak Design one because of those quick release attach that they have. Yeah. So I can quickly switch between having the strap on and off. And it helped me a lot to have my main camera with me at all time rather than shooting with my phone. For example. Yeah. And, and something to know is that the Peak Design quick release are super helpful in the backpack. But if your backpack is empty, it actually unbalances and it pulls your camera down because there is no counterweight. I'm using it also for other things. For example, I have that dry bag that I'm used when we are out on a boat, for example, where we're going free diving or just uh, going with the whale. Uh, I always have the dry bag for my phone, maybe a GoPro, uh, some water, whatever in it. Um, and the problem with those dry bags is like they are rolled up back and they don't have like any sling or anything it's just like something yeah. that you hold with your hand uh, so to have like free hand i'm just attaching two anchor from peak design i'm just putting that strap on and then it became like a sling bag so i'm using it for all the stuff as well so it's been really really helpful in the different scenarios i always have one hanging in my bag just for the daytime or evening going to the restroom you just want that yeah. i think my number three is going to be my little mist filter right here that I've been using more and more, I think for the past year and a half. I found it extremely helpful to get a little bit of softness and dreaminess in my shot. So this is a one quarter. I think I also have a one eighth. This is a Nisi mist filter. I can just like 
pop it on. It's one of their Nisi uh, system, which is cool. But you see it changes a little bit the highlight. It makes everything a little bit softer. Can be helpful in daytime if you want that look. Or especially at night, if you have little lights in the background, it really makes it look very misty. It adds atmosphere, which I love. And by the way, if you're on my top five list, uh, if you receive the newsletter from me, you actually got notified that I released the new Master 3 preset pack. And within that pack, I created a preset that helped emulate mist filters without having to have a mist filter, which I found extremely helpful, especially whenever I'm tapping into portraits. I really want to soften. I don't want something too, too, too harsh. Uh, and I love the result. I use those presets all the time. And yeah, that's pretty cool. I kind of love that. So mist filter, and I think you use them too, yeah, right? I'm using uh, so this one specifically, which is the Swift system from Nishi. Um, I really like Nishi because I feel like it doesn't change the color too much, for example, for the R&D filters. I would recommend using like a 1.8 strength for the mist because uh, I feel like one force can be a bit too strong. If you don't want to really have a strong look, the one eight allowed to just like bloom a bit the highlight without uh, being too noticeable. The one force, we can start to really notice uh, the difference uh, in terms of look. Nice. What do you have next, Jeremy? What do we have? Uh, the fourth one for me will be having a small light. I'm using this one, the MC from Aperture. Um, I really like uh, to have always a small light with me, especially those one. The cool thing is the back is magnetic, so you can easily just like put it like above your subject, behind the subject, if you have anything metal around. I've used it a ton recently in New York. Uh, when we were on the street doing some portrait, for example, uh, we found a neon uh, that was blue and I wanted to have some red on the other side of my subject. So I've just like put that up, put it somewhere and uh, we had something that was quite interesting i feel also recently i was shooting something with some dj we didn't add that much light and i've used that i've diffused it with like a bottle of gatorade that was just like hanging out on the table it just create a lantern and diffuse the light. And that was quite helpful to just like add a bit more light on the side of the face of my subject. So I really, really like those one. And Aperture in general has been super reliable. Uh, even Yeah, great brand. Stuff. I've, I've used them a lot in the studio. That's a, that's a really good recommendation. Those small lights are always so helpful and can help you get some creative stuff. Which brings me to my fourth one. It's gonna be actually a thumb grip that goes on your hot shoe. And I use those, especially for cameras like the RX1, R2, the Ricoh GR3, a camera that doesn't have too much grip, even the Leica, for example, where it's kind of, you feel like it could slip a little bit. Adding that thumb grip really helped me just stabilize it in my hands. Uh, your thumb is resting on it. And what I love about it is that I, ch I chose a red color, so I added a little bit of a pop in my camera, how it looks. Just make sure it's gonna be compatible with your camera that if it has an angle, it's gonna, not gonna hide any buttons. So that's something to, to know, but I found this tool extremely helpful and extremely simple. Drum roll, what do you have? So number five for me gonna be a small film camera, a small point of shoot film camera. Um, this one is the Olympus Mishu. I will use it either with some black and white or with some Kodak Gold C200 or 400, depending on the context. I just really love this one because it's fully automatic. I don't have to worry about my focus. I don't have to worry about uh, anything. I'll just carry it with me at all time. And it has a replace me taking picture with my phone. Uh, I tend to go towards that instead. It allows me to take some shots that I would not have taken otherwise. Uh, for example, sometimes when you ask people when you travel for portrait photos. Yeah, they might be a bit they, reluctant when you come with the back Yeah, camera, they might be right? a bit just reluctant and scared about like the big camera, especially if you have like a 7200 on or something. Uh, so I never had anyone uh, refusing a picture when I was asking with something like that because I just think you're a tourist and they're just like happy to just say, yeah, sure. Um, so I got some really, really cool shots with that. Um, I really like it. Also, one thing is because I cannot review my images, just the overall mm. process of analog has been like super fun. Uh, it doesn't take me out of the moment. I'm just snapping my shot. I'm not over worrying of like, oh, maybe I can try this angle or maybe the light could be better there mm. or whatever. I'm just taking my shot and then I'm going on with my life. Uh, so it doesn't take me out of the moment, especially for example with friends where yeah. you just want to capture that specific moment. You don't really mind if the focus is not the best. If the light is not the best, you just want to capture that moment. That's been really, really fun and helpful for that. And it's always a nice surprise when you have a roll of film over like a couple of weeks or months and then you just develop it and you're like, oh, I forgot about All this moment. Moments. That's pretty cool, you know? know? So that's always a very nice surprise. So that's been like the thing that I enjoyed the most using this year. Found it in Tokyo last year and uh, been using it since almost uh, every day. That's awesome. And it brings me to my number five and it's actually kind of the same, but it's uh, my Konica C35 
which I just broke the front lens sadly or like a little piece came off and then fell and broke and I put it back but so now every single one of my photos is gonna have artifacts which could be cool but honestly it's the same thing it's like how can I take photos without worrying about anything else than just the action of documenting you know of creating that photo having fun just being in the moment not worrying about the result and that's what i found with this camera although it's manual focus yours is out of focus i love that it's a 38 millimeter f 2.8 which gives me uh, a little bit of nice depth of field and i don't have to think i ever need to do anything with the photo i just receive it and it's like christmas when you receive them you're like oh my god yeah, i love it oh they're so terrible one. oh this one is great this one's terrible right now i have a black and white film i had a kodak gold which by the way i love to look in tokyo and i ended up emulating the look into a lightroom preset but with more of a modern twist and i included in the master three pack and i love 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 it and i've been using it uh, a lot lately and there's different variations of it and you'll see if you get the pack it's one of my favorite it gives that film look with a modern twist it's like not too film because you may have downloaded presets that are emulating film and you're like what is that how can i ever use that but now it gives my a1 that little like edge that i absolutely love so yeah i was able to emulate it so i'm pretty happy but nothing replaces uh just taking photos with that yeah the whole process is just really fun as well right yeah it is and it reminds me when i was a teenager when i was a kid shooting with the uh what do you call that disposable cameras mm -hmm. when i was going on a trip i would come back with a week you know and like 20 photos and that was enough i don't need 200 on my phone <laughs> yeah yeah so with that being said i think the conclusion is have more fun while you're taking photos, while you're creating photos, use those tools to actually allow that to happen and not get in the way of creating. And get gear that facilitates you shooting, you know, like that doesn't get in the way. I feel like the more time passing by, the more I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff that I used to use before. I'm simplifying my kit and I'm just going for stuff that make it easy and quick for me to shoot. Yeah. Because the more rep I can get in, the better it is generally. Well, I hope that gave you a few ideas. Remember, at the end of the day, the gear is one thing, but Invest in your skills and your experiences first if you want to join the next 30-day adventure to great photos. The one and only step-by-step -step training over 30 days to take your photography to the next level. And with that being said, guys, I wish you an amazing day. Get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.